What's up, engineers? We're going to be using an amazing tool here called the Anatomage Table. This is a table that takes real people, real people who donated their body to science, and what it does is it actually digitally recreates these images that gives us a really great appreciation of gross anatomy. So what I want to do today is I want to utilize this table and help you guys to visualize the anatomy of the thorax. Let's do so now. This is Victor. And what I want to do is I actually want to take and get past the skin, past some of the muscles, and I want to get deeper and dissect down to where I get to the thoracic cage. Now that I've done so, what I want to go ahead and do now is I want to dig in here and go through all of these different structures. Let's do so now. All right, so if we look here, we're going to notice the sternum. A couple different parts that I want to go over. The first part is the maneuvering of the sternum. Then you come right below this sternal angle to the next structure here, and you can see the body of the sternum. The next part is that we come right here below. We have this next little structure hanging off called the xiphoid process. You gotta identify this before performing CPR. You wanna go above it. Next thing is we zoom in on the manubrium. We're gonna notice here this little notch called the jugular notch, and then here you have the clavicular notches. Below, right here, is the sternal angle. Identify this and it helps you to count the ribs. Actually, pretty interesting. Then we zoom in on the ribs. We have true ribs, one to seven. They connect to the sternum via the costal cartilage. Below that is the false ribs. This is ribs 8 to 10. They connect to the sternum indirectly via the cartilage above them. And then finally is the floating ribs. Now, from here, I want to take a look and zoom in on the rib and look at a little couple different pieces. First one is the head of the rib, right? Then we're going to notice the next part here, which is the neck of the rib. And then lastly, you're going to notice this little bump here. You see this little guy right there? That's called the tubercle of the rib. We're going to have the shaft of the rib, as you can see here. Underneath that is where the neurovascular bundle is actually located. And then if we go to the back here to kind of look at the actual connection, we'll see here we have this connection between the vertebrae, the thoracic vertebrae, and the ribs. A couple different joint structures that we should be able to identify. So we'll notice here is a joint between the head of the rib and the body of the actual vertebrae. And then over here is a joint between the tubercle and the transverse process. Then we have the muscles that are located between the ribs. We have the external intercostals, which help with taking in a good deep breath. And then deep to that is going to be the next structure. And that's going to be called the internal intercostals. And they help to be able to play a role with forced expiration. Interestingly, just deep to this is the innermost intercostal muscles as well. Let's do the next step, which is to zoom in on the actual muscle that connects to these ribs as well. And a couple other parts called the diaphragm. There's the sternal part, costal part, and the lumbar part, which is via the cura. There's a couple different holes that are located in the diaphragm that we should identify. The one is where the inferior vena cava runs, the caval hiatus at T8. Another one is where the esophagus actually runs through, which is called the esophageal hiatus at T10. Then there's another part where the aorta runs through, thoracic and then becomes the abdominal, called the aortic hiatus at the level of T12. Then there's in between here, remember I told you that neurovascular bundle? One of them is going to be the nerves, the intercostal nerves. There's 11 of them, T1 to T11. Now, it's important to remember that these nerves carry sensory and motor information. So as you can see in this example, it's actually quite interesting. We have the motor cortex, runs down through the cortical spinal tracts to the lateral and anterior. This is motor fibers that will then be carried through the intercostal nerve to these muscles that we talked about, the external internal intercostals. In the same way that the intercostal nerves carry motor information, they carry sensory information from a dermatome to the spinal cord up via these various tracts. This will carry your proprioception, fine discriminative touch. This will carry your crew touch and pressure, and this will carry your pain and temperature to the cortex. Really cool. So we see the intercostal nerves having those two functions. Then we have the arterial supply. We notice the posterior intercostal arteries which arrive off of the thoracic aorta and also a costal cervical branch. And then we have another structure here which is gonna be coming off the internal thoracic arteries and these are gonna be called the anterior intercostal arteries. We've covered the arterial supply. Let's now move into the venous supply. That should be the next part. So we notice here a part of the kind of neurovascular bundle, the posterior intercostal veins and they empty into the azygous vein which actually empties into the supervena cava. And then also, which drains into the uh, parts of your structures here, you see you have the anterior intercostal veins. These are also really cool structures. All right, engineers, I hope you guys enjoyed this video on the anatomy of the thoracic cage. It's really cool to be able to use a tool like Anatomosh to be able to really help us to dive in. Hope it made sense. Hope that you guys liked it. As always, until next time.